Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we are going to solve the first problem from the SD sheet that I had prepared for you. So if you check out the first problem, the first problem states that it will be given an array that will be containing n plus 1 integer where every number will be between 1 and n. And what you need to do is you have to find the duplicate number in that array assuming that there is only one duplicate number. So if I take the first example, you can see there is 1, 3, 4, 2, 2. So the duplicate over here is 2. So you got to print 2. So if you see the second example, you have 3, 1, 3, 4, 2. So the duplicate over here is 3. So you're going to print 3. So since this is an interview problem, we will start off with the basic approach and then we will discuss about the better solution and then we can optimize it to get the most optimal solution. So the naive approach to solve this problem will be to sort the given array. So if you sort the given array, the array will look something like this. So once you have sorted the array, what you can do is you can linearly traverse in the array and there will be an index where you can see that the value at the index i will be equal to the value at the index i plus 1. Because you're sorting the array, the duplicate elements will be together in the sorted array. Hence, you can easily find the duplicate element. Now, this method will take your time complexity of b go of n log n, assuming if you use mass short to sort it, and it will take an extra space of b go of 1. But what this will do is, this will distort the array. So we can optimize our first solution. Now we will be optimizing the first solution using hashing. Now the problem already states that all the numbers will be in the range 1 to n where the given size of the array is n plus 1. Now over here we can see that the size of the array is given as 10. So what we need to do is we need to create a frequency array of the similar size all initialized with 0. So once you have created the frequency array, we linearly traverse in the given array. So initially we have two. So we update the index two by one. Next time we have five. We update the index five by one. Next time we have nine. We update the index nine by one. Next time we have six. We update the index six by one. Next time we again have nine. But when we are going to update the index nine, we see that it is already having one. So this actually tells us that this 9 has already been found in the array. So which gives us our duplicate element that is 9. So the time complexity for this given approach will be b go of n while the space complexity will be b go of n. So we improved on the time complexity but we did use some extra space in doing so. Now the most optimal solution uses the linked list cycle method. So let me explain what this method is actually. So initially we have 2. So we write 2. And after that we go to the second index and see what is the element at the second index. So we see that there is 9. Then we go to the ninth index and see what is the element over there. So it tells us that there is 1. And after that we move to the first index and see that there is 5. And after that we move to the fifth index and see that there is 3. And after that, we move to the third index and see that there is 6. And after that, we move to the sixth index and see that there is 8. And after that, we move to the eighth index and see that there is 7. So after creating the cycle, we are going to use the tortoise method. Now, the tortoise method tells us that we're going to take two pointers. One is the slow pointer and the other one is the fast pointer. So the slow pointer will always move one step whereas the fast pointer will always move two steps. So initially, the slow pointer will move to 9 and the fast pointer will move to 1. So after this step, the slow pointer will move to 1 and fast pointer will move to 3. After this step, the slow moves to 5 and the fast moves to 8. After that, then the fast moves to 5 and the slow will move to 6. So after this, your slow will move to 8 and your fast will move to 6. After this, your slow moves to 7 and your fast moves to 7. So this is the uh, number where the slow and your fast pointer collides. So whenever they collide, you're going to stop moving. And after that, you're going to take the fast pointer and place it on the first number. At the next step, you'll not be following the tortoise method. And you will be moving both the pointers simultaneously by one point. That is, you move the fast pointer by one point and you move the slow pointer by one point. 
and the point where they collide will be your duplicate number. So we can easily say that 9 is our duplicate number. Now you might have questions like what is the guarantee that where the slow and fast pointer meet for the second time will be our duplicate number. So I'll be coming to the proof of that. Now since there is a duplicate number we can surely say that there will always be a cycle. Now since there is always a cycle and the slow moves by 1 and our fast moves by 2. So it is for sure that our slow and fast pointers will be moving any time on the cycle. So the first collision has been proved. Now let's prove the second collision where we are finding the duplicate number by moving the slow pointer by 1 as well as the fast pointer by 1. So let's assume this is your starting point. This is your duplicate number and this is your first point of collision where the slow and the fast pointers are meeting. Now assume that the distance between slow and the first point of collision is A. So we can easily say that the slow pointer has traveled a distance of A whereas the fast pointer has traveled a distance of 2A. So the difference of distance traveled by the fast pointer and the slow pointer is A. Now we can always say that this A will always be a multiple of the length of this cycle. Now that is very obvious because the fast and slow pointer are meeting at any point on the cycle and they'll only meet if the difference between slow and fast pointer is a multiple of the length of the cycle. Again that is very obvious because let's say the slow pointer is here and the fast pointer is also meeting over here. So that means the fast pointer has moved an extra distance of this much and we can easily say that this is the length of the cycle. Now this can be multiple turns. So that is why I am saying that A will be a multiple of the length of the cycle C. Now assume the distance between S and D is X. So we can easily say that the distance traveled between D and C will be A minus X. Now to find the second collision what we were doing was we are keeping the fast pointer over here and we are moving it now assume that your duplicate number is at a distance x. So your fast pointer will move by a distance x and since we are moving the slow pointer simultaneously with the fast pointer, the, the slow pointer will also move a distance x. So we can say that it will be at a distance of a minus x plus x from this point which actually makes it a distance of a. Now a if you remember, we already proved that it is a multiple of the length of the cycle. So we can easily say that when we start the slow pointer from here and when we start the fast pointer from here, they are bound to meet at this junction and hence we can easily find our duplicate number. So this was all about the logic. The time complexity over here will be big O of n and the space complexity used over here is big O of 1 show you the code where you can understand that we are not actually creating the cycle and we can use the given array to actually traverse the slow and fast pointers. So let's quickly uh, deep dive into the code. So in our code we are initially initializing the slow and fast pointers to the first number and then we move the slow pointer by 1 and we move the fast pointer by 2 that has nums of nums of fast and inside the do while loop we keep on moving the slow pointer by 1 and the fast pointer by 2 unless they meet at any given point and we know they are bound to meet. So after they meet, I keep the slow pointer where it was and I move the fast pointer to the first position and after that I start moving the slow and fast pointer unless and until they meet. So I'll be moving slow pointer by 1 and I'll be moving the fast pointer by 1 till they meet and whenever they meet I know either of slow or fast pointer will be my answer. So we can easily return that. So that was about the C++ solution and the Java solution almost looks similar over here. The only difference is the input that we are taking. I hope you understood the explanation completely. So just in case you did make sure you like the video and yes do leave a positive or a negative feedback in the comment section so that I can improve on the quality of the videos more. And yes if you are new to my channel make sure you subscribe to my channel. And yes uh, that's it uh, for today. Let's meet uh, in the next video where I will be discussing the second problem from the SDE sheet.